In a previous video, I introduced you to the Zoot system, which is a prototype stand for the Wacom Cintiq and other types of display tablets. The Zoot is an alternative to the Wacom Ergo stand or an Ergotron arm, and it makes it very fluid and easy to go between working with the screen down more level like this, where you'd be drawing, or you can use the touch features, and then if you want to go back to that vertical orientation, you simply touch the side and it has electromagnetic brakes that will lock it into place. We'll get into that in more detail in just a little bit. Chris, the inventor, lent me a Zoot system to review in my studio, so I'm gonna be reviewing it in more detail and sharing my experience with how the Zoot system has impacted my workflow. Before we get started, I just wanna mention that this is not a sponsored video. As you can see, the Zoot is attached to a Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. This is the tablet I'm currently using in my studio. Before receiving the Zoot system, this Cintiq was attached to an Ergotron arm. As you can see, I have two Cintiq 27s side by side so that we can compare each mounting option. I use my Cintiq daily. It serves not only as a screen to draw on, but I also use it as my primary monitor for email, video editing, script writing, graphic design, and lots of other tasks. Before we get into how I've been using the Zoot system in my workflow, let's dive a bit deeper into the appearance, features, and specifications of the Zoot system. As I mentioned earlier, the Zoot system allows you to easily angle your screen. The angle changes as the tablet moves forward into your lap, and then it moves away from you in the opposite direction to a more vertical orientation. The angle is then fixed in whichever position you like using electromagnetic brakes. To disengage the braking system, all you need to do is touch a touch strip with one or more fingers. These touch strips can easily be customized. You can make them larger or smaller, and you can position them wherever you like on the back of the tablet. The base of the Zoot system features anti-toppling arms, which keep the base from toppling forward, and they also declutter the cables on your desk. The base also features the grip feet, which can be used to slide the monitor toward and away from the user or side to side to find an optimal position. The base is elevated up off the desk just a bit, the area underneath the base was designed to fit an average size laptop. The available height of the base will vary by the screen attached, but should be at least 2 inches or 50 millimeters. Now if you have a keyboard and a mouse on your desk, no worries, the Zoot system glides right above your keyboard and mouse without knocking it over or pushing it off the table. This allows you to effortlessly go between monitor mode and touch mode. The Zoot system is quite easy to install, it basically just clamps onto your desk. The clamp has an adjustable bracket which will allow you to attach it to desks up to 3 inches or 75 millimeters thick. It does take up a little room on your desk. Now I will note that the setup may be a little bit different if you're attaching this to something other than the Cintiq 27. For example, the Dell Canvas requires some modification to accommodate the power cables. I also want to emphasize that this is just a prototype and the actual production model is going to look a lot more polished. Another thing worth mentioning is that the Zoot system requires an additional power cable to power the electromagnetic braking system. In other words, you need to plug in the Zoot system for the electromagnetic brakes to be able to operate. The build quality of this stand is very durable. It's made with a lot of steel. It's also a bit heavy. It's about 20 pounds, but it's not too heavy for a sturdy desk. The Zoot system will come in kits. Kits are pre-configured to suit a specific screen model. You can order the Zoot with your preferred kit pre-installed, and you have the option of swapping kits if you change to a different tablet. Currently, there are a handful of supported tablets, but more tablets will be added as the project progresses. The tablets that are currently supported are the Cintiq Pro 32, the Cintiq Pro 24, the Cintiq 27 QHD, the Cintiq 24 HD, and the Dell Canvas. So that's kind of an overview of how the Zoot system works. But let's compare it to my Ergotron arm, because that's what I've been using for quite a while now. As you can see, I have one Cintiq attached to the Zoot system, and I have another attached to an Ergotron LX arm. Now, I do want to mention that the Ergotron LX arm is a bit different than the Wacom Ergo Flex arm, which goes with the new Cintiq Pro 24 and 32. But essentially, they do the same thing. I'll be reviewing Wacom's Ergo Flex arm very soon. So let's start by comparing the bulk and the weight of the two devices. The Zoot is twice as heavy as the Ergotron LX arm and bulkier, but we'll talk about why that's a good thing in just a bit. As far as rigidity goes, the Ergotron uses tension, which you have to adjust with a wrench. Even at a high tension, it still wobbles quite a bit. 
The Zoot lies flatter on the desk and was engineered to reduce wobble. The electromagnetic braking locks the tablet in a fixed position and then easily unlocks it with a simple touch. As far as drawing is concerned, I would say overall across all of the different positions that the Zoot is more stable, but it does wobble a little bit in the vertical orientation like you see here. When you lay it more flat, then it's much more stable. The Ergotron arm is kind of a mixed bag. If you have it floating in the air, then obviously it's going to wobble a lot. However, if you rest your Cintiq on your desk, then it's a lot more stable. It barely moves at all. Now let's discuss articulation. We'll start with rotation. The Ergotron arm and the more recent Wacom Ergo stand can both be rotated. The Zoot cannot. Honestly, I don't ever find myself needing to rotate the screen when I can just use touch to rotate my canvas. The only time I've ever rotated my screen is to demo that it can be done. It's just not a practical feature in my opinion. In terms of positions, the Ergotron arm has more axes of motion, so it can move side to side and up and down as well as forward and backward. The Zoot can move side to side and forward and backward by sliding the base, but it cannot move up and down in a vertical orientation. And as far as angles go, both devices can be angled from vertical to nearly horizontal. Next we'll discuss fluidity of movement, which is a very important factor. The Zoot is much easier to move. It practically glides into position. In contrast, you practically have to wrestle the Ergotron arm to get it into position. Did somebody say wrestle? Moving on to cable management, both devices allow you to tidy up your cables. Though I did a sloppy job with my Ergotron. You can actually route the cables through the Ergotron arm, which I did not do. I just used zip ties to keep them in place. I would say the two devices are about equal in that regard. Next we'll talk about consistency of position. Because the Ergotron arm segments move around so much, it can be difficult to keep it in a consistent position. The Zoot is a lot more rigid, so it's not going to shift out of position every time you angle the screen. The weight limit of the devices is an important consideration. Both devices can hold large displays, but the Ergotron has a weight limit, and a heavier device can reduce the range of motion and rigidity of the arm. The Zoot, however, is pre-configured to be optimized for the exact weight of your display, which makes adjusting the screen feel light as a feather. Now let's compare how the two devices mount to a desk. Both devices use a clamp. However, the Ergotron can also be mounted by drilling a hole into your desk as well if you're not able to use the clamp. So how has the Zoot system impacted my workflow? I'm definitely becoming a lot less reliant on my keyboard and my mouse, and I'm able to use my Express Key Remote and my pen and touch on my tablet to do a lot of the stuff that I was doing with these kind of older tools that I'm in a bad habit of using. I feel way more comfortable moving the screen position. I know that sounds silly, but it's buttery smooth to just go ahead and move the screen. And if I want to move it back, I can move it back. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort, so I'm more likely to do it. My back actually feels better because my posture has improved. I'm able to elevate my chair a bit, get rid of the keyboard tray, and then I can scoot in nice and close here. And then I can move this down here into my lap. And then it's very easy to just get in here and kind of lean on the screen and draw. And I can have much better posture overall. And I can put it back to monitor mode and that makes it quick and easy to go between all the different ergonomic positions. Now I want to talk about some things that I'm still adjusting to. First of all, I need to remember that I can actually move my screen position. I'm so set in this habit of using the Ergotron arm where the screen basically just stays vertical the whole time and that's how I use it and I don't really move it to being able to go, you know what, I feel like drawing like this today. So I can put it down like this and get in here and draw like that and lean on the screen and if I want it to be more upright like this when I'm working on it, if I want to paint on it like that, I can do that. Another thing that's taking a little bit of adjusting to is the wobble. Now it doesn't wobble a lot and it's really more noticeable along the sides. If you're pushing in the center, it's actually pretty stable. And my desk moving is causing a little bit of wobble too, but this is actually pretty sturdy. So when you're drawing on it, you're probably not going to experience a whole lot of wobble depending on where you draw. If you're over here, of course, it might wobble more, might wobble less here. The wobble doesn't bother me so much when I'm drawing, but it bothers me because I record myself drawing and I don't like having the screen jitter around. But that's, you know, kind of a gripe that might only apply to me and maybe a few other people. Otherwise, if you're gonna be drawing on this, you'd probably be drawing on it down in this position here. And if so, then it's actually a lot more stable in that position. It doesn't wobble around quite as much. 
And I will mention that wobble is something that's going to happen with really any stand. It really kind of depends on your desk and how you have it set up, but the thing's going to move around if you're really pressing on it. The question is, how much is it going to wobble? So those are definitely some things that are going to take adjusting to. Now I'm going to transition into a section of this review where I'm going to just be going through my regular workflow. What do I do on an average day? I check my email, I might write a script, I might record a video, I might edit a video, I might do a drawing. And so I'll kind of go through each of those things so you can see how the Zoot system is working as it pertains to my own personal workflow. So on an average workday, I might start by checking email, and I would of course have my tablet in the monitor mode, upright like this. Then I might move on to maybe browsing YouTube, and in that case I might move this down to a horizontal touch mode. Then I might go ahead and go back up to vertical again, and go ahead and type a script for a video, and then back down to the horizontal mode to do some drawing. And if I decide maybe I want to do a little bit of drawing in the vertical orientation, I could of course do that too. And then if I stay in monitor mode, then I can move on to editing a video. And as you can see, there's an optimal position for each task. And it wasn't terribly difficult to switch between each of those different positions. After trying the Zoot system in my own studio for about two weeks, I have to say I'm very impressed with all the positive changes that it's introduced into my own personal workflow. I think it'll probably take me more than a couple of weeks to really get used to working on this device. I'm going to have to break a lot of bad habits, but it definitely has potential. I'll have more opportunities to use the Zoot stand and I'll be able to adapt to it a little bit more, so I will keep you updated on which stand option I prefer. Honestly, the Ergotron is doing an acceptable job of holding my tablet up, but it's really kind of silly because I just keep it in one fixed position. I very rarely ever move it because it's really just kind of a nuisance to move around. I'd really like to use touch more often, and I'd also like to be able to draw in positions that are much more comfortable and don't hurt my back. But like I said, that's going to require me to retrain myself to be less dependent on those old habits. So that's a more in-depth look at the Zoot system. It's a really fantastic alternative to the Wacom Ergo Stand and the Wacom Flex Arm. You'll be excited to know that I'm going to be reviewing the Zoot system attached to the Wacom Cintiq Pro 32 very shortly, and I'll be working with the Zoot system up until it launches for crowdfunding in early 2019. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to get my latest updates. If you're interested in learning more about the Zoot system and where you can get one, sign up for Zoot's email list. I'll put a link down in the video description, and you can even register to win a free Zoot system.